Hey, how's it going, church family? It's me, Jusakande. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're being blessed. Um, today's message is going to be about making haste decisions. I, the Lord gave me this message last week, and then based on what happened at the Oscars, <laughs> it, just, it just all fell into place. What's a haste decision, by the way? I Googled it, and it's basically making a decision in a quick, in a hurry. Basically, you don't really have much time to think about it. And most people watching this will admit that there are some times in life you're not going to have a chance to sit down and meditate and think and go pray to God. Some things are just going to happen. And in that split moment, the decision we make can be one of the biggest decisions we make in our life. I'm going to talk about people in the Bible that have made poor decisions in a haste moment and who've made life changing great moments. I'm going to go ahead and start off with the negative, you know, the negative, just to, you know, get that out the way. Um, in the book of Genesis, we know about Jacob and Esau. And if you're not familiar, I'm going to pray for you. But Esau, basically, well, him and Jacob were brothers, of course. And one day, Esau had just come out, come in from hunting. He was one of the hunters. Jacob was in the house, right? He was a mama's boy. And Jacob was cooking some food. And Esau said, hey, um... I'm dying of starvation. Can you give me, can you give me a bowl to eat? Like, 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 give me something to eat. And Jacob being a trickster, that's what his name was, a trickster. He said, I'll give you this food if you sell, if you sell me your birthright. And Esau made a hasty decision and said, oh my gosh, sure. Here, have my birthright. What is it going to mean for me? And he gave over his birthright for a bowl of porridge or some soup. And right then and there, that decision that he made was going to alter and change the trajectory of just generations to come. And you see, he was being melodramatic. He was, he was acting as if he was going to faint, like he was starving for like days. But he just saw some food. And isn't that like us in the moment of a, a weak moment, we make a poor decision? I got another one for you. Um, in the book of Samuel, uh, King Saul, the, the king before David, he had it all. God gave him, he told Samuel, go get me a king, give, give the people what they want. And he brought Saul and God blessed Saul and made him king. And um, at one after God gave Saul a, a, a command to go destroy and just get rid of an entire uh, uh, community that just pretty much had sinned against God. Saul decided to take it upon himself and do what he wanted to do. And Samuel gave him strict instructions to make sure that he did what got rid of everything, kill the cattle, kill all the soldiers, kill the king. But he said that he was going to do it. So Saul, and if you read it, you'll see Saul did all of that partially. But then his men, the people around him, started looking on him without favor and they started leaving him. So he said, no, 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 no. I got to keep the party going. I got to keep. He made it about him. And he decided to sacrifice the, 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 the things without, without doing it basically behind Samuel's back. And as soon as he finished, he made a poor decision. And then right when he was done, literally right when he was done, it was like the devil's almost like the devil's like, yes, yes, got him. Samuel comes walking up saying, what, what have you done? And he says, oh, even at least he was honest. He says, oh, well, you know, after we had conquered and destroyed him, the, 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 the men started leaving me. So I said, hey, I know how to do the I know how to do the sacrifice. I, 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 so I went ahead and did it. And Samuel said, you fool, you fool, you fool. And then he said, do you not know what you've just done? He said that you just you, 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 you just jeopardized your entire lineage. And that's literally what happened because of that decision he made in a haste moment because his people were leaving. him. let me go ahead and just stop right there. People, body of Christ, people who were certain to be people of the body of Christ. There are going to be times in life where people are going to pressure you to do something you know you should not do. Trust me, don't do it. For that moment, you may feel you got victory, but the joke's going to be on you. And let's talk about the obvious one. We can't, we, we can't. This is right there in the beginning. Adam and Eve. Oh, yeah. The enemy pulled up on Eve. Made her think about it. She made a decision to go ahead and eat the fruit. And then Adam, not listening to God, had a moment of weakness and boom, because of what they did, here we are now. So you see how just a small but gigantic decision can give such terrible consequences that will be generational. But we also have people who did it and, and, and a great outcome came out. 
Uh, let's talk about King David, the guy that God used to replace Saul, man after God's own heart. If you've read the story, you know that after Saul knew that he was no longer going to be king and God had told David in private, I'm going to make you king. Saul started chasing after David for almost more than a decade. And he was making David's life a living hell. He literally let David know, I'm going to try to kill you for no reason. And at one particular moment, it said that David and a whole bunch of disgruntled men, mighty men that were ready to die and serve, they were in a cave and Saul had came into the cave. You guys, you guys know the story. And Saul was relieving himself. He was using the bathroom. He was doing a number one or number two. I don't know, but basically he was in his most vulnerable moment. And David had a moment to think, my life has been in such disarray because of this man. God has already promised me that I'm going to be king. If I kill this man right now, who has literally been trying to kill me for year after year after year, I can end it all right now. But David knew that he was never to touch God's anointed. He had said, you know what, if Saul is going to be killed, it's not going to be by my hand. But David took it a step further because the men that were with him were like, oh, God has given him into your hands. This is an opportunity. Be careful when people tell you what God said you should do. Because I'm telling you, if, you, if you're not sure, do not do that because the consequence is going to fall on you. So you know what David did? David decided he said no. He fought off the men and said no. He tore a cloth of Saul. And you know what he did? He now tried to make peace with the man that's been trying to kill him. As soon as Saul went off, he said, Saul, look, I don't have no issue with you. I don't have no beef with you. I just want us to be cool. I love you. And Saul even said, you're right. You're a better man than me. God is going to make you king someday. And then literally the next chapter, Saul started chasing him again. You know, some people never learn. But if you really want to see somebody who didn't make poor decisions and a hate decision, look no further than our Lord and Savior, King Jesus. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. So his his human flesh was at its weakest and then Satan himself came and tempted him. But Jesus stood on the word of God, turned the bread into stone. Oh, man should not eat from bread alone, but everywhere that comes from God. Oh, jump off this cliff. You know, the angels will, they'll, they'll, they'll take care of you, man. Should not test God. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Okay. Don't, don't be emailing us talking about, I didn't say it the right way. And then he also said, okay, okay, okay. Since you are the son of God, serve me. And he says, no, 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 man to serve God and God alone. Depart from me. You see, that was Jesus showing Jesus would look 40 days and 40 nights. Not easy. And that was the highest level you could think of. None of us have fasted without food for 20 days, let alone 40. So, you know, um, I do want to end on this, unfortunately. I, t I talked about the Oscars and you saw Will Smith, one of like, literally, I I I've looked up to Will Smith. And literally, I mean, this is the guy that was a rapper and said that I'm not going to put no curse words in none of my rap. Like he actually has always had been a stand up person. But in a moment of a haste decision, he made a poor decision and made a fool of himself, of his name in front of the whole world. And I promise you, I'm pretty sure that he's looking back right now and he's regretting what he did. I hope and pray that none of us make a decision moving forward that we have to look back and regret. Saul regretted it. Esau regretted it. And we have made decisions we've regretted. So the key is to continue to ask God right in the beginning of the day. Lord, help me not make no haste decisions, especially the ones I don't have time to pray about. Help me help my inner man. Help my, the Holy Ghost guide me in all that I should do. Well, I hope this helped you guys. And I hope that we know we're human. We're going to make mistakes. But some decisions are just not worth it. To God be the glory. Amen.